Hey there, welcome back to my channel. You're at the Thrifty Journal shop and my name is Amber. I feel like it's been forever since I've been here, <laughs> since I made a video last. I hope you all had a great Christmas and a happy new year. I uh, got the flu, which was totally unexpected. I, uh, I never get sick and I was down and out for a long time. I still am not feeling all that hot. But, um, so I was out of my craft room, which was not cool. I was pet sitting and I didn't get to do really much of anything, but that's okay. Cause I'm feeling better and we're in a new year and I've got lots of ideas for 2024. So today I thought I would, um, I had a request from a subscriber on, um, some of the paper that I had made. If I could show how to make this certain paper. I was showing some of these papers um, in one of my other videos and she was like, I love the shiny paper. How did you do that? So I'm going to just take you along today and show you different ways that you can make um, your own papers for your journals. Maybe by adding some color. This is, we're going to use some acrylic paints and just have fun with them. Um, I did not do the back of these papers. We might do that today. Um, or we just might leave them plain and then I can show you what I do with them when I put them in a journal. Okay, so for these papers, I'm just going to take plain copy paper. So just white um, copy paper. And you know, you can find this anywhere. I found it at thrift stores. You can get it at the dollar store. And then I'm also going to use some lined paper and, excuse me, and then I've got some music paper. So we'll do some stuff with acrylic paint and then I'm going to show you um, something else that I do when I want to make, I call it handmade paper, even though this paper isn't handmade, but what I do, um, I guess, is considered handmade. Okay, so you're going to need some paper. Let's just start with some acrylic and I'll show you what I do with it. I'm just going to put a couple down here and then we're going to put some paint on here and then I'm going to let it dry behind me and I'll show you that setup because I'll probably put you on pause for a little bit, let it dry and then we'll pick up the video. Okay, so I am just going to, um, I've just got some different acrylic paints here, a bunch of different colors. Um, this is my suggestion of, of doing that. Um, you don't want to have, I would say no more than like three colors per page. Otherwise you start to get like kind of a mess, um, and you can get some not so great colors. And then I just use like, this is an old credit card, a gift card, anything that you're going to swipe. If you have like a fancy, I don't know, they have those fancy paint scraper things you could use one of those all right and all I do let's start with some pink as I just take some pinks and these are perfect for um Valentine's Day I'm gonna put a little orange in here all right and basically, I just take it and I scrape it. And you can scrape over on the other side. If you're trying to scrape it off. A lot of times I use, these are just pieces of wallpaper. I'll scrape on this and um, reuse this even. It's messy. <laughs> uh it's definitely messy. That turned out to be a little bit more orange. So sometimes I add a little more pink to it. And some of these, um, you know, these are older paints too, so. A lot of times I find when I'm doing this, I'm like weeding out um, 
some of my paints here. All right. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. I do probably, I do go all the way to the edge. All right, and I'm gonna put that one, we'll let that one dry. Like I said, some of these paints are older. So I am dealing with some older style paints. And yes, I just I want to wear some old clothing. I have an apron on. And it's messy. It is a messy thing. So there is another one. We'll let that dry. And sometimes I just do, um, I just experiment with colors here. That is pretty purpley. Okay. Let's do some turquoise. This is some chalk paint, which is pretty dry. All right. Let's see what we have here. So that's kind of pretty. a mess. I'm going to do a little orange. I've got some yellow. Here's some gold. I've got this wild color here. That's really pretty. Got the gold and the pink, gold and kind of that reddish. Um, you can also take another page and you can pat it down. A lot of times though, when you do that, you will pull the paper up. So sometimes you pull the paper up off the other, but that's okay. We can just, we'll just recover it. Um, sometimes that gives an extra look. All right, add a little bit more gold here. take some music paper and we're just going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of stick with some pinks here today. I am making um, some Valentine's journals. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got here.
All right, we're gonna do a few more and then um, I'm gonna show you another way that I make paper. So what I'm finding out here is that a lot of my paints are dried up, <laughs> which is okay. It's the new year. We might need to go out and buy some more acrylic paints. We will just work with what we have here. A little pink here. And this just looks really nice inside a journal. It adds color to your journal. Um, you can use this. You can put these pages in a journal, attach pictures to them. You could use this paper for collage. Okay, so that's another one. All right, we're gonna let these dry. All right, we're just gonna clean up a little bit of this. Add a little bit more. Sometimes we get a little bit too much paint, so we're just gonna, we're gonna put that, we'll let that dry. Okay, that's got some blue on it. Add a little bit more. So some sometimes um, just playing around here with experimenting, um, I do get a little bit too much paint, <laughs> but it will dry. We're not gonna cover these whole sheets. We'll leave them just like that. Okay, and here's all the papers drying. I just put down a sheet and this is my couch and my shop area there's the window and I just let them all dry here okay so we'll let them dry when they're done drying I'll pop back on and show you the finished product while we let the um, acrylic papers dry, we'll let those dry and then I'll bring them on camera and kind of show you what they look like and what you can do with them in a journal. Um, I thought we'd make um, some more paper. I love just taking um, music paper and stencils and it just really adds to the page. It brings color, um, texture, cause you know, you could use, this is, so this is using stamp pads, which I'll show you how I do this, but you could also do watercolors, you could do acrylic. Um, this is just a really easy way and it's not so messy. So see like in one of my journals here that I made, I like to take um, like music paper and stencil on it. I think on the back here I used some watercolor and then I did stencil. Uh, so it just gives the paper, the journal, some color, um, just a different look. And uh, I just really love color in journals. And I think the stenciling just gives like a different dimension. And really you could do so much with stencils and papers. And, um, you know, you could put gesso on here for a little added texture. Okay, so... This is just taking music paper 
and some stencils. These um, were just like punched out stars. And, or you can take like full stencils, anything that you have. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna use music paper, but like I said, you can use, you know, copy paper, you can use line paper. We'll probably do a little bit of both. So what I do is I have, I've got a bunch of stamp pads. Um, I don't own too many stamps. I usually get them at thrift stores, but I got these like years ago at Amazon and I wasn't really even using them. And I thought, you know, how can I use them with um, some stenciling? I've just got a bunch of these. Um, I don't have like the little dauber thing for the distressed ink. So we're, we are going to use some distressed inks too, or distressed oxides. I just take makeup like sponges and use these. Um, if you have a dauber, you can do that. Um, I've got some clean ones here. So we're just going to open this up, put some color. If you wanted to, you could um, tape this down if you didn't want it to move. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so really you're just blotting. And you can um, add color. You can... And I'll switch it up. I'm not too worried about these stamps, these ink pads, really. This is really what I use them for. Okay, so then you have a little bit of that. So let's go over here. We'll use this. And we're going to take the blue. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dab over it. Hopefully this isn't making my camera shake. And we're not looking for perfection here. <laughs> I don't do anything for perfection. Um, I do a lot of trial and error. So this is just actually going to give some added color to this, some texture. See, isn't that pretty? It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, let's see, let's do some more stars. And we're just blotting this okay so we've got some stars all right okay I also have this that I got I got this with these at a thrift store I got some of these um, why not? So we have some apples here. And if you were working on a themed journal and you wanted to make some of your own ephemera or decorate some pages, you could very well sit down and, um, work with some fruit or apples for cookbook journals. Um, you know, really, the sky's the limit here. Okay, so that just gives you added texture. All right, let's add some more color here. And I'm just using this. All 
Oh, that's pretty. Okay. And what's nice about these is they dry, so you can do both sides if you would like. Okay. You can also take plain copy paper. And if you're worried about, you know, if you want to keep your stamp pads from not smearing into each other, then, you know, you can use different colored makeup brushes for each one. I'm not real concerned about it. Like I said, this is usually what I use these for. That's really pretty. Okay, and then you know we could work on the back. See, we've got a leaf here. All right, now we'll just take some plain white lined paper. flower And you could very well do the other side. All right, so this is what you can do with some stencils and some craft ink pads these are just stamp pads or you know your distress oxides you can take those um, some makeup sponges and some music paper and just make some fun pretty textured paper so we did that one you take some plain line paper or copy paper okay any kind of stencil will work these are just um, punches these these will work great for this if you've got some stencils um, like I said you can get stencils anywhere I think these were from Hobby Lobby I believe this one's from the Dollar Tree Thrift stores, a lot of times, I've gotten stencils before in the past. These are all from the um, thrift store. And that was another one we made. So, got music paper lying around, copy paper, lined paper. This was some of that paper that I made um, the other day. And it is just using acrylic paints and 
and a little scraper. Two or three colors. You don't really want more than two or three colors. And you can do the other side if you'd like. I did not do the other side of these. A lot of times I kind of like that look or If you want, what I do a lot of times is I will glue these together or sew around here and then you've got a double-sided page and then you can put that in a journal and then you've if got like it's a little thicker and you could also like punch here and you could have like a pocket. You could leave this open in a journal. So here's some of the ones we made today. Very easy. And like I said, um, we didn't do anything to the back, so I could very well go back through and paint the backs and I might do that. I might leave them the way they are and just double side them. Um, might glue them together, sew them together. So I have added colors. You could do that. This is one of the journals I recently made. But what I did in this journal was here's a page that I made. And then I just added a different paper to it. And I sewed it and I left this as a pocket. Um, I might punch it up there. So that's just an idea of, you know, you can use the acrylic paint on one side and um, do something totally different on the other and it gives a little bit more texture. And I also really love the feel of the crumbly of the paper, the, the paint, how it dries, it gives a little crumbly effect to it. Um, yes, I will do a flip through of that journal. So I hope today was informative on how you can just take some paper, anything, any kind of paper you have lying around. I mean, you could use letterheads, you could use vintage book pages. You might want to um, make a master board first. Maybe I'll do a video on that because they can be very frail. So you'd almost want like a layer of them. But um, I find that like copy paper, lined paper, music paper works really great especially uh, music paper because it is so thick. So here's another one. You can kind of see the music and, you know, the music bars behind there. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna add these to my journals and um, just for some fun, for some color. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this inspires you to get out your acrylic paints or your watercolors. Grab some stencils and, um, you know, do some stenciling. Oh, oh, one more thing I want to add. So when you've got all your papers and they're all dried, what I would do is I would stack them up and then get a nice um, heavy book and kind of lay it on there so they can dry flat. All right, friends, I'll see you soon. Take care.